Welcome to the first time Buffalo Game Space Game Club podcast. I am your host, Pat Kesterson. I'm my host, Greg Giles. Oh, that's weird to say that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I like that. But, so the point of You're this driving. is... driving. Oh, I don't like that. I just turned 16. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a whole thing. Uh, I'm drinking. Things are going bad. <laughs> just like my first time <laughs> driving. But... <Anyways>. Uh, <laughs> So the point of this is that we take a game that we've selected in a previous podcast or in this, uh, hopefully after when we're done talking about this, we'll grab another. But we sit down, we break down, and we really get into the meat and bones of what we thought about a specific game. We always talked about doing this in the regular podcast, but we always had other things to talk about. We always had to move on. So now we just made a podcast all about just talking about one game. So that game this week is The Beginner's Guide. No. Appropriate, right? Our first one. Yeah, it kind of fit. It a just bit. dawned on me how, how uh, timely that, or not timely, <laughs> but oh yeah, I say it fits. Topical. Okay, so to give a little background to this game, real quick, it was made. So it came out on basically every computer you can. So it was it on came PC, out on the Mac, SNES, yep, and uh, Genesis, 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 yep. Uh, and it came out on October first, twenty fifteen. So the first question I have to ask is, did you play this when it actually came out, or did you play this a little bit after the fact? That is a good question. When was it again? October 1st, 2015. Well, that's almost exactly a year ago. Wow. Well, oh, yeah, it was. That, yeah. That's weird. I would have uh, said it was longer ago. It felt like it was two or three years, but not that I look <laughs> about it that late. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess, guess it's been sitting in my Steam library for so long, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, I guess... I probably played it not right when it came out, but probably I probably played it in like January. It was okay. probably safe. So a couple months after that. Yeah. I played it, <coughs> excuse me, about a month and a half ago. Okay. And I feel like that hurt the game. Uh, yeah. But we'll go into that uh, in a little bit. So I guess just to break it down, this was supposed to be what? His follow-up, the guy's follow-up to Stanley Parable? Yeah, so he made the Stanley Parable, which was, like, a huge success, obviously. And and if you don't know what that one is, I guess I would describe that as, like... Choose your, almost choose your own adventure. Sort of. But then it folds back in on itself to it's, be, like, a meta-commentary. It's very meta. Excuse me, meta. I, this yeah. one is, too. This to one is very... Oh, yeah, they both are. But I feel like this one was a little bit more direct about it. Yeah, this one, this one gets a little more... Yeah, I guess direct and serious. A lot more philosophical. Yeah, yeah. Um, Almost like at times. Actually, I'd go as far as to say the whole game is a pr- pretty good bummer. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. Ex- yeah, no, that would be a great way of putting it. So, like, does like to introduce the game. So when I say that, I feel like the game actually got hurt by me not playing it immediately. Okay. Yeah. So Melissa, my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, she was watching. I think. Uh, Jack Septicai or some somebody uh, play this. It was somebody okay. that she watches play. A YouTuber. And uh, she came up to me is like, "Dude, like you like have you played this game? This is super. Like it got shit got real at the end." And I'm, yeah. Like well, well, all right, no, I have not. And then I finally got the opportunity to play it for this. Yeah. But I've had you know, roughly now a year's buildup of how incredible and meta and awesome this game was. And I really didn't care for it. I'm not sure I do either. It, it I don't felt know. preachy. It felt like it was overdone a little bit. And yeah, I, I agree. feel like because of me hearing all this, that's why I feel this way. Like if I just gotten this on October 1st yeah. at face value, I thought it was great with no prior like knowledge of it. But since this game was so, I don't want to say bare bones, but this is what it is. Yeah. You can play through the whole thing in, what, an hour and 15 minutes? Uh easy probably if Let's that see. uh uh i you could probably i don't know i think it's more probably more like two hours but that's kind of splitting hairs, a short right? a yeah, short amount pretty of time short, yeah and like all that hype for something that i don't know no this game is this game if it was hyped uh i mean in my opinion i would have i definitely wouldn't have liked it if yeah. i had been hyped to me it's just sort of like a thing i tried and so, it was a cool experience yeah i like i was kind of on board until towards the end where uh, oh by the way, <clears throat> spoilers ahead. Oh god, um, massive! This whole thing is a spoiler. A point, yeah, this podcast is one big spoiler. Yeah, um, for this and all future ones. But <laughs> I, the the fact that like I did like at the end where okay, so at the end of each 
so this whole game is broken up into like a guy who has a Davy. Uh, uh, the point is like it's Davy, and then the guy you're playing is as who's narrating. Davy. I want to say here I should have done. It's created by Davy. No, it's created Redden. by Coda. Well, the, no, the game's made, but the game. But the game itself was put together by Davy. By Davy. Do they ever give a name to the protagonist? No, it's just you. It's just He's you. just narrating right. your way right, through. Right. That's it. right. Oh, that's yeah. right. Like. But who's na- who's narrating that? That's Davy. Coda was the one who actually made the individual games. Which is interesting because I have a feeling that Coda is actually Davy. I there <laughs> in, there was in the some real, in real life in real context like yeah all right so to kind of introduce this man this table's wobbly um even though yeah go ahead and I'll try to stabilize this yeah, table like, um, but uh, so like the game is started as you are playing as you and it's incredibly meta and that a guy named Davy put together a whole bunch of games into a compilation from a friend of his named Coda. And he and Coda had a very interesting take on like what games were and that Coda felt that games necessarily shouldn't be beatable or playable in a sense. Yeah. And uh, Davey obviously thought that, you know, you should be able to play a game. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was actually on board for this because I thought it was cool, like game theory, Yeah. basically. All right, so we're kind of breaking this down a little bit. We're seeing it in action, yeah. so to speak. Um, and Davies are obviously very simple, but Coda's is artsy and like Excuse me, and out there, and a little bit abstract. And he's like so, almost like a godlike figure. Like he's he, elusive, and and he makes them seem, yeah, godlike would yeah. be like he makes them like put by the end of the game, like Coda is on like this pedestal. Yeah, that he, you he can't really can touch. do no wrong. Like yeah. even when, yeah, I, I would say I would say he's he's to a large extent almost considered and 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 characterized as being pretty infallible. Yeah. yeah. Like every game he made was fucking beautiful and right. perfect. I don't know. It, it, I take it with what you will. Yeah. Uh storytelling. But so you go so Davies narrating your way through each of these games. And there would say probably about what 15 total, 10 to 15. Yeah. Like each the one they're yeah. not like super long or anything. I I in my I uh I just when I was watching them, I was trying to sort of like think of how I would describe them. I would say they're like paintings. That's exact. It's an art piece. Yeah, it's it's yeah. like it's like a self-contained like situation, but delivered in a way that you can really only do in games, which is which is great. Yeah, you know? it's interactive. At art. least you got yeah they got that like that's a big strength of the game. Uh, it was yeah, and there was some like uh, stuff that was just really like it was cool to uh, to look at and see how they like did things and how you saw the. Hey, like he, they, like the very first thing you do when you start the game is, Davy's or sorry, I'm gonna Coda's first game was a map in Counter Strike. That's how he supposedly started doing this. Yeah. was making Counter Strike maps. And so you start the first level basically is you're walking around a Counter Strike map, yeah. which is, and then like you see the progression. That so, was cool. And that brings up another point, which is not super relevant, but also not completely irrelevant, which is this is all done in the Source engine. Yeah. As was a. Uh, Stanley Parable. Um, Stanley Parable, yeah. Yeah, no, the, yeah, absolutely true. I mean, it, it's not the like the most beautiful looking game, but this game doesn't have to be. No. Um, and it works with I don't know. I think the fact that they kind of own the fact that they're in the Source Engine, like with the text engine and like how they do all that. Yeah. He at one point he even just exp- lit- straight out says, "This is it, the Source Engine." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like so like the fact. Once again, this game is super goddamn meta. So it's real meta. I think it's pretty dense at, too, uh, yeah. and uh, very tangled in its message. It's funny that you say that because all right. So the one, the cool thing I actually liked about the ending was the reveal of the lamppost. I thought that was neat. How like okay, so at the end of each world, apparently Davy says that there's a like Kodo would always put a lamppost in at the end right. to like signify the end. Yes. No matter what the game, no matter how weird it got, right. There's always a lamppost at the end. Yeah. And it turns out there's a reveal at the very end that in the very last game that uh, of Coda's that he plays. Long story short, Coda r- uh, reveals and texts like on the fucking wall <laughs> that he put lampposts in all of his games. So it was actually Davey basically making them playable in a sense. And he was... Davey put the lampposts in. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then... Th- ah, man. 
the fact that they were like, I was trying to weave my way through not just a very abstract world, but also have a dude telling me in my ear yeah. what was going on. Right. I don't know. It felt like it, like, it, it felt like there were, f- I couldn't concentrate on one or the other. And then when it was over, Melissa looks at me like, what'd you think? And I'm like, I have literally no fucking clue what the message of that was supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, it, it felt like it was too up its own ass at the end. I uh, I can't disagree with that. However, I feel like, I don't know. I think, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves in this discussion. Mm-hmm. But I guess, I guess suffice it for now to say like, yeah, this game's... And I kind of thought that about the Stanley Parable, too, to tell you the truth. The sa- I play, all right, so the Stanley Parable, I played, like, when it was a mod. Yeah. Like, way back. When, right. So I so kind of got, engine mod I before, got the yeah. pure, uncut version, yeah. uh, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, cocaine Oh. <laughs> um, so that would be actually a perfect example of, because I played it then, and I just got the experience, and that was it. Yeah. That made it way better. Yeah. Uh, and then you have this for I feel like it was easy and the fact that I paid what 10 to 15 bucks off a of steam sale for this uh, um, for beginner's guide yeah so it's just kind of like mm, yeah. I, I don't know I'm still like yeah but we we've already mentioned that <laughs> yeah but um, so I guess I don't know uh, I guess we'll start with what are the points that towards the beginning that when they're just kind of introducing that you remember like the individual games the worlds if you will yeah um and I think in this discussion, maybe we should also point out, or at least in my opinion, there's kind of two layers to this. Because like, the first time you play it, mm-hmm. and then you get a twist at the end, and that completely changes how I would have seen the beginning levels. So This is true. I went back and reviewed it. So I kind of have a couple of... Div- I, I guess my most... my Most of my opinions, I guess, will be just based on the most recent thing, my go- playing through it again with the understanding of where it goes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, like you said, the, I like the Counter Strike level because it's just cool to see a Counter Counter Strike stuff not in Counter Strike, right? Like, it feels genuine. Counter Strike, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like this is like like hell. Like so I'm gonna uh, like I made a Counter Strike level. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Oh like, man. Yeah. Every, me too. Like, that's it. Made it feel like okay, this is actually like a game developer's journey. So and oh, man, there's so much to talk about here, and I I feel like we're going in a lot of different directions, but that's yeah. like another angle to this, right? Like. I think this game resonates differently on your, depending on your perspective mm-hmm. or maybe even like our understanding of it as people who design and play a lot of games and think about games and talk about games all the time mm-hmm. is completely different than most people really. Yeah, and I we're, think we're weird. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but, um, and I think that, you and I are going to have a very different perspective on this than somebody who maybe just ca- more casually plays games Absolutely. or so, you know, and, and, and somebody who maybe plays games and doesn't make them and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so to me, this first thing was sort of like, like to you said, like almost comforting. I was there, I was with him. Like mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, okay. I know what it's like to like put maps together. And, and especially, I had a fondness for Counter-Strike. Yeah, especially and you walk through and you see textures missing, that little green skin yeah, thing. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh. Well, that's another funny thing is if you've made these maps, like the Source Engine like uh, s- basic tools are all over this game. They're yep. used completely throughout like the orange boxing and stuff like that. And again, like that's a detail. I don't actually know if that matters. But it's a thing that changes how it, we see it. It makes it for somebody who knows. It makes that part better. Yeah. Like when I saw that, I felt like okay. You felt like you're in on it or something. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It felt like they were actually like sitting down. Like if like a dude out there sat down and showed me something that he worked on. Yeah. It, that's what it felt like. Like yeah. somebody was literally sitting down at the game space and saying, "This is a game that I made or like a map that I made." Uh, it's yeah. It felt familiar it felt real it yeah felt, yeah so so that's like the first one where you kind of walk around and that's where you they sort of set the stage um after that i mean i'll, I'll start with that one what about you <clears throat> the one that i remember at the beginning where like there was like the door puzzle which got like the same door puzzle every single time um mm-hmm. The one of the ones that I remember, I can't remember if it came first or second, but I'll start is the the one where uh, his first game jam one, where he had like all the text bubbles, Dark Souls style. 
Yeah, like that around. Was, uh, I wonder. I wonder if that one's just like. Um, oh, there we are. We're watching it. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna throw this up so that maybe. Maybe we'll remember something. Like I said, there's a lot going on. I don't know. Oh yeah, like For, I, despite not really liking this game, I gotta say, gotta say it is it is pretty dense and in in some ways subtle um which there's a lot to take in there's a lot and i feel like that is reason enough to like a game but honestly i just i don't know i just don't yeah um <laughs> anyways so uh or was i uh what was i saying oh yeah i wonder if he gets annoyed with i wonder if that was like he even it had to be from dark souls i oh, think oh yeah it, it felt like but i'd be so mad if it wasn't and i made and that and i'd be like yeah. dude other people can come up with similar ideas. It doesn't have to be direct. That, that was <laughs> funny because that was like the first one where uh, I could say like, oh, this is from blah, blah, blah game. Yeah. Oh, this is his first sci-fi. Oh, it, it was weird seeing like some of the incomplete ones, basically. Oh, right. So the one right after the, um, yeah, so the one right after the Counter-Strike one is this like sort of unfinished sci-fi map. Stereotypical college yeah, right. it really just does look like your first game, <laughs> you know, where, like, you have the gun and you're building this space story and stuff. And I think that's the point, really. Yeah. No, once again, we're on the journey. Right. Uh, right. So this would have... Yeah, this would maybe be, like, on the progression of Coda, like, work, like, okay, I made a bunch of Counter-Strike maps. I want to make a game. And mm-hmm. then sort of, like, he's coming from Counter-Strike, right? So he's just very in the very game mindset and makes this space game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, so the thing to take away from that one is the ending. I can't remember what it's called, but it's like that little beam of light machine where you're supposed to walk into it and yeah, and then you float up. You float into up space. as a glitch. Yeah. Um, which is actually it was pretty neat to see the skybox and everything. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty skybox. Yeah. Um, that comes back later, the very last one. So they kind of they bookend it uh, with uh, that at the very end. But uh, like so, the one I remember after that was. Besides from the chat bubbles, because some of them were actually just kind of funny. Like, the level itself was not really interesting, but looking at some of the uh, the things that the quote-unquote people said uh, was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but the one I remember, like, I really started realizing this was starting to get weird was the jail games. Or yeah, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, like, sort of prison theme that he yeah, gets into. So there's, like, what, four or five of them? Something like, yeah. Like, that you're yeah. even shown. I think he says that there's even more, there's more yeah. beyond that. Where it's just all just, like, you and some bars somehow. Yeah. And, it, it, and they were just uh, becoming more and more weird and abstract. And I, kinda, I liked it because who cares it doesn't have to necessarily make sense it's an art piece um which if you go into this game looking for an art piece you're gonna have a much better time i think and i think what you just said actually is kind of the point of the whole thing the whole game which is like it's like the old like this idea of needing a point a conclusion and an answer Mm -hmm. in in like to art or things you interact with i almost feel like this this gets a little like philosophically prescriptive in saying like you should not do that there yeah. may not that may not exist and you're whatever you like the lamppost is basically i think like a player of any kind just drawing his own conclusions and inserting his thought his his answer into what he sees and that's what the lamppost sort of is when the truth is is there's not it's not that like the experience isn't meaningful, but there's not like a concise one sentence. There's not one this set is, up by this is what is true. The creator, right? Which that's where I started kind of landing towards the end, especially when you make that discovery. Like, I always put together the whole like, okay, like say you're in Minecraft or something is a perfect metaphor. There is no like, yeah, yeah. there's technically an ending, yeah. but like you're not supposed to. You're supposed to make of that with what you will. And the well, ending and that and the like when they started jamming like a whole progression of that yeah. I, I, f- I think it feels forced in Minecraft. It, it, yeah, I mean it's supposed to be like adult Legos basically. Yeah, like you're just right. supposed to go out there and well, what do I do? Okay, yeah. like you just make goals for yourself, which is what I saw the lamppost as. Uh is the, him making a goal. To me the whole game was about the str- not like the struggle between him like trying to take his like Coda stuff or anything. I saw it as the struggle between the player and developer. Yeah. Like the yeah. player wants this either grandiose thing or this is a perfect no man's sky 
uh, <laughs> callback to the developer just wants to make something that's grandiose yeah. that you just ex- like explore and ex- experience and the players go well what's the point of that it's not what we decided it was yeah. like how dare you and, and, yeah. and that's like he literally broke hacked the game to make it that and like that's like how yeah. I envision that like yeah. he literally to the like and since he's an unreliable narrator, which is a writing thing, so yeah, that's why. Like once that happened, pretty much anything that he says in that whole entire game goes shit. Exactly. Uh, when I was going through it again, mm-hmm. I just assumed everything he said to be false. But then, I don't think that's everything I, he I says mean, is false necessarily. I, I doubt everything he says is false, just yeah. because these are sp- still got to be Coda's games yeah. technically. In the and early like explanations and progressions, make a lot of sense in the way that he explains them. Yeah, yeah. like no, it definitely like some of it's true, but I think. Basically, once he starts, I don't want to say judging Coda, but, like, playing psychologist on him, that's when, like, no. Like, ever, pretty much at that point, what he says, I think is bullshit. Uh, just because, uh, well, actually, it was probably around the time of the prison, where he starts basically getting worried about him and feeling, making sure something's wrong or everything's okay. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like it, in the in reality, supposedly Coda's fine. He's just doing Coda. Yeah, he's just he's yeah. just exactly yeah. exactly. Yeah, he's that's how I that's kind of how I saw it too. Like, it's not a, like this guy this guy that's like narrating. It's ma- he's making this entire experience about him. He made it, and it's not about him. A and, out and of by him, I mean like the narr- he, narrator. The narrator is making the experience about the narrator. When really the experience is about Coda, and because mm-hmm. it's Coda's work, doing Coda ideas. And that yeah, exactly. At the very end, Coda's like, "Why are you fucking with my shit? Why are you showing this to people? I didn't want to show it to people. I showed it to you because you were my friend." And it, the narrator would always go out and show people because it's like he wanted to be it. Wants to uh, bring it right back to No Man's Sky. It's like they wanted to be a part of the development cycle. Like they're just a the player. You're not a part of this, but yeah. they felt like they were. Right. And that's why he showed it. He's like, when he showed it to people, he felt like he was make the one. Like, uh, he took over the responsibility of making it. It got very self-absorbed and selfish. And then, well, all of a sudden, when he didn't have Coda making games for him anymore, he I, I don't know what hole he went down. But yeah, who knows? I don't think it. It sort of leaves off. At like he get Coda just fu- just fucking pieces out and Pretty then much. and then the narrator's sad and then I think that's just the end. So that's yeah. He, he literally just it. like says I'm not gonna talk for a little while or yeah. something and then you play so so the whole game is an anthology made by the narrator of Coda's games to try to m- make contact with Coda again. It yeah, turns out we should probably get. A little get back to just oh, the, the story, the the actual yeah, literal the game itself. Like, timeline, because I think the way that unfolds uh, is necessary, kind of, uh, somewhat necessary. Like we don't need we don't need to know every level, but like yeah, let me here, let me sit down and look at like a synopsis real quick. So long story short, he met Coda at a game jam, the one game, the Dark Souls one, where he loved what it was and he thought it was just super like really. Awesome. I mean, I mean, he thought it was cool, like yeah. which they, you know that happens at game yeah. jams. Um, so then Koto make, makes a game every so often and there's longer times and as the games get more abstract and darker the narrator starts wondering if something's wrong with Koda. Um he he starts wondering if everything's okay what's going on through his head and these these, ma- these maps do to be fair get pretty dark they do they're about they start to have these themes of like jail and darkness and prison and like these these almost like surreal like very abstract like yeah very abstract like like bordering in some ways undisturbing but like there yeah there's definitely an undertone of this like unsettling yeah like uh, under a lot of them yeah and then so that and then so the narrator takes us through these and he explains them which is kind of the problem yeah <clears throat> see and that goes back to the whole there is a narrator which is in and of itself a problem with an art game is you're not necessarily supposed to have one but then i think that's also the point they're trying to make there there's there's a lot of points that seem to go against other points in this game yeah i think so too i think 
I think the game, the, the game. <sighs> Go ahead with what you're gonna say, because I agree. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so all right, so let's hear. So the he and Coda only makes these games for like himself to watch, and he gives them to Davy. Right. That's the guy, the narrator's name, and then he gives them to Davy, and he shares them with him. Yeah. And that's it. That's like all the people who are supposed to see. He's not making this for fame or glory. He's just shit giggles making these weird things. Yeah. Um, and but then when Davy starts showing them to people because he goes, well, why does Coda not want attention for this? This is weird. That like, that, and he just doesn't understand that he's just doing it for himself. That's right around that point is where they start getting weird. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit after the prison, so I'd say about halfway through the game. Like, um, so thirty yeah, things, minutes, thirty-five minutes in, things start to unravel a little bit. Where like. You, Coda becomes uh, explicitly hostile towards yeah. Davy. Yeah. And there, so like one of the levels ends with like, "All right, dude, you gotta, you gotta like, like the level in the level. There's literally text directed at the player that says like, "Stop, leave me alone." The it just says exactly. we can't be friends anymore. Yeah. Like. And. Uh, and that's the same text that shows that he put the lamp posted himself. Yeah. That was Davy doing it, not Coda. Right. So, so there's like this. There's this interesting turn from. Oh, let me take you on a tour, of fun ideas to a, prog- a progression to just almost like a total mental breakdown. It definitely like that last level or like that game. Like yeah. he starts like rambling, and like. Just like he, he's, he's talking like this, like and like yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And then it once again it undermines the whole thing because, I mean, you can't help but think, okay, yeah, he might have been telling the truth some of the time, but this was still a thing. Like he was still at least somewhat thinking about this this whole time while we were going through. Um, which. As much as I like to delve into the gameplay of this game, there really isn't that much to it. I <laughs> know. It's, it's pretty minimal. You just walk around a space, you look at stuff, and sometimes yeah. you can interact with things, but the interactions are as basic as it you, gets. Yeah, you just watch it and see it, and okay. Like, there's a part where you clean up the apartment or something. Yeah. Like and, you have, l- and so all you do is walk up to a pile of books, and it's like, put the books on the shelves, and you yep. just hit a button, and all the books are on the shelves, and there's no animation to it even. Like, it just... It pops there. Pops there. Yeah. So that's why, like, the story in this one is the game, because without that story, these are just oh, okay. There's some just like weird college student learning how to use Unity yeah. experiences. Yeah. But with the story, it actually like kind of ties it all together, which I have to say is a, they did a good job with it. Yeah. Um, it's all like tied up very nicely, a little bow on top. It's bookended well. Yeah. Um, the progression, uh, I think each next level usually shows, it's never, I don't know, I guess sometimes I f- didn't quite f- understand, like, okay, this, what's, like, to uh, the uh, first one where you get to, where you're on the spaceship, whatever, with the gun, and he's making the gamey game, and it's his first game after Counter-Strike, no. and that one ends with a glitch. And that, and then the next one's very artsy and experiential, and so you're, I guess the con- the conclusion or my interpretation of that, which I liked, was like, he was making a game, he discovered this glitch, and it completely changed how he thought about games. Yeah. And then so the next map you or map because they're called yeah. <laughs> they're called maps in the Source Engine, the next map or level level game uh, is uh, you are walking backwards to read uh, things and it's yep. a it's a very artistic ex- non-gamey experience yeah there's a lot of cool ideas right and so that progression i found there was a lot of meaningful progression in that way but sometimes i didn't quite get w- like the sequence of like okay why what is going on in this level that the last one didn't have or the train uh, of thought. Yeah, like, the train yeah. of thought between levels. And then maybe maybe they're not supposed to always be like that, but I... I, I would say that I, they should have because, once, at least from the narrator's perspective, which I can kind of agree with, at least at the beginning, is that when Coda made them, they were all a string of one. 
Like, they all, like, he would make, like, the walking scene at night in the woods. Like, he made the first part of that, then he made a couple, and then he made the second part of that, like, yeah. complete that. Like, it's all, like, they all are supposed to, like, tie in together, They basically. work better as a whole than one-offs. Yes. Yeah. So, but you're right. Like, there are some of them, like, I, I guess maybe one over my head that just didn't seem the fit. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some of them that, like, because and because you can't trust the narrator again, so the narrator tries to like sort of puts his own take on put it, his own yeah. take on it. But like, I don't know if sometimes the things he's saying could because he's unreliable, he could just be missing the point. And but I don't know, it gets a little tricky when you're trying to kind of guess. Okay, why is this thing happening right now? Um, and how does it tie into the bigger progression? It can be really hard to sort of figure that out sometimes. The issue is we don't know the context of the games other right. than the fact of what the narrator is telling yeah, us. Yeah, right. And, the, and these are laid out. And I guess that's worth noting in a big way that like the, the these levels do get laid out and the order in which you play them is determined by the narrator. So yes. it's very much reinforcing some story he invented. Yeah. Supposedly, these are in the order that they were released. Yeah. But once again, we don't necessarily yeah. know. Uh, once, that one, once you I actually, know the bullshit he pulled with that lamp post, yeah, you can't trust him anymore. That one I actually kind of take because he pulls that out with dates. Like he says, like specifically this month and this year is when he makes he made it. So that would be asking a lot for a dude to come out with some BS dates. Yeah. For a thing. So that one I actually kind of believe. Yeah, and um, I think I think they like we said they do make some logical sense on their own. Mm-hmm. And when you're playing through, like if you didn't have the narrator there, you could almost see where they were going. But with like you know the, each sequence, yeah, certain things. Like if you were to by yourself play these in a row, right? You might like you would be able to see at least a little bit of the logic behind yeah, it, right? Yeah, it's some of the time at least. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, towards the end. You're. It's a really good way of you, when you said he becomes hostile towards, yeah, Davy. Like where the game itself isn't like. Once again, at the very beginning, he like one of the first levels. He says like, they always like butted heads on whether a game should be quote unquote playable or not. Yeah. And then towards the end, like they started becoming more and more unplayable. Right. And Davy had to. Yeah, and actually, like. Ex- like so the design the the point at which he becomes hostile the design changes from interesting sort of unplayability like in the in the one map where you you're going up the steps mm-hmm. and all of a sudden as you're going up time slows down to the point where if you played it in real time it would take you like hours to get to yeah, the top of a, not a very tall a very you know a, a long set of stairs but not that long um, he says, like, what, it would have taken you an hour to do it in yeah, real time? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, an that's like poetic. But then w- that changes when he becomes hostile, and that kind of frustration becomes, like, here's an invisible maze. Every time you hit a wall, you hear a buzz and get teleported back to the beginning. It's basically impossible. Yeah. Uh, but possible. Technically. Te- yeah, and then also... There's like meaningless uh, number combinations. Yep, that's in the very last one. I is think. it? Yeah. Okay. Where it's just straight up that whole thing is like I think the narrator says like there's no way you could have known this without actually looking into the game itself. See that or see is that is it that or m- I didn't know if if maybe looking into the it must be looking into the game because, because the only other answer is that the is that the narrator sat there and really literally brute forced his it. way through this which, stuff which i, I doubt know. because he seemed like once again he was doing that staircase he's like i'm going to make it so that you just like up yeah here, up there exactly or you don't have to do that so like he's shown that he has the ability to he knows what he's talking about when it comes to like yeah. game develop like opening a file and changing things yeah at least to that extent so that's why like i, w- I would argue like that he did, like, say if it was made source, but say, like, you know, he had a, the Unity file or whatever this was made, and he actually looked at it and said, that's what this is supposed to be, and then made it that way. Um, yeah, right. Because, like, once again, like, even he, like, the narrator himself stressed that he was getting confused as to the absurdity of the difficulty in, in these. Yeah, and so, and in talking about this right now, though, uh, another 
possible layer to this is he is probably going through these unplay quote unplayable levels and he's skipping the actual experience that was designed and then he's trying to assign meaning when he never really maybe Did experienced it. it at all right that's an interesting output god that can be applied to so many different things in the real world it might be a stretch even in this case i don't know if that's quite what's going on here the thing is with this game i honestly wouldn't say anything is a stretch because there's it once again the way i feel that this game wants to be seen is up to interpretation that there is no meant to and it's the battle between people asking for an interpretation yeah and you assigning one of your own at the same time, so this is my, and this is my problem with the game actually right here, is I feel like this game is saying two contradictory things, and I'm not sure it's aware that it is, mm-hmm. which is which is hard to believe because the game is very clever. It is very subversive. So it's hard for me to imagine that this was, this contradiction is not intentional. At the same time, it, I don't know. My, my, beef, my beef with it, as the kids say on the streets, uh, <laughs> is that this game is all about the uh, the idea of like a person engaging in experience and trying to interpret and extract meaning from it. Yeah. And how stupid that is to do. Not stupid, but like how you basically shouldn't and maybe even can't do that because you don't know what anybody's thinking. Yeah. You can't you can't just look at stuff and be like, I know what's up here. That person is a completely different reality than you. Mm-hmm. Like, you you can... I mean, there's definitely, like, some predictability to how people are going to act and think and stuff. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you you really can't count on any of it. There's always chaos theory. It, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, yeah. it's just... It's just... It's futile. And that's, I think, what this game is saying. At the same time, that lesson is entirely contingent on you digesting and interpreting this game. And... <clears throat> It in that way, it almost destroys what it creates simultaneously. The, the, what I said before, like there's multiple points in this game that counteract their own point. Right. Like there, there's, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Which I was why towards the end, like you're, I was so confused as to wh- what. I hate to be this way, but once again. The ending's up for <clears throat> interpretation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, the whole game is just like, like, once again, it's the war between Coda saying there doesn't have to be, Davy says there does, he has signed his own, and then all of a sudden, because of that, Coda goes against his own thing yeah. and starts making a point in his own games about how you're not supposed to have a point. It, it's yeah. just... It, it gets once again so far up its own ass, and, and exactly, and because yeah. and there's another layer to this, right? Like, okay. so what I just said is true, but then if you zoom that out again, it actually then makes sense because the game is kind of saying nothing is true, and the fact that the theme eats itself alive reinforces that. But here's the thing, I'm fucking tired of this meta shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm tired of this zoom out infinitely stuff. Like. It's just not interesting to me anymore. Like, there's plenty of, like, life itself has all these unanswered questions, and it's infinitely frustrating on its own. I don't need a game to do that for me. I think the one of the, I was, uh, think about this after the fact. The reason, one of the reasons why I really, in the end, didn't like the game is the fact of the matter is, I've seen this before. Oh, yeah? And, well, just, like, in in, in so many different ways. Like, yeah. Theoretically, every goddamn art piece ever that's been abstract yeah. is saying the same shit. Yeah. And every single movie that's the same Apocalypse Now, yeah. like like all that stuff, there have been games that did that before. Yeah. So it's just like Can you f- dig into that a little more? Like Okay. You- um so uh one I kind of kept bringing up was a little bit of Bioshock. Okay. Um and that how the game turns meta on itself, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, with the reveal being that you're being controlled, and then yeah. it's like, it kind of like if you wanted to pick into it a little bit further, which I think you could in this case, it is an analysis on games. Yeah. Like the player just blindly does right. what yeah. you're told. Yeah. Or the game's just like, the fuck, bro? Why yeah. are you just like? It turns it on its own head. 
Yeah. But the thing is, there's an actual game around that, too, and there's, yeah. like, other fun to be had and experiences. Bioshock did, in that time, in a full game, what this game tried to do in an hour, two hours, and just was doing that. Yeah. And it did it better. Yeah. Because it did it cleaner, yeah. and yeah. there was more... And a lot deeper. Yeah. So much deeper. Because yeah. there was an actual game around it, yeah. as opposed to me just... Walking around, very, albeit like cool ideas in different games, but in the end, I was just walking around and clicking on shit. Well, sorry, I guess I misunderstood you. I was saying that this is a much that the beginner's guide is a much deeper explanation or yeah. exploration. However, I don't. It, in both cases, there's no conclu- There's nothing there. Is yeah. nothing. But that's the point. It's just like the reason why I would say Bioshock did it better is because they made that point move the fuck on. Yeah. Like there's a rest of a game there, mm-hmm. and then you can take mm-hmm. with that what, what you will. Yeah. Whereas sure. this just, just was this and only it, this. It and just rolls around in this like nothing. Yeah, and yeah. that's the only like. And since the argument itself, this is getting into the whole like f- super philosophy of if there's a god who created the god, like. There's no answer, and since this is the only question they really pose in the whole game, you're right. It rolls around on itself, yeah. and there's nothing. It's like you just put something in a box and shake it around. Yeah, right. There's nothing for it to bounce off of. Yeah. So that, to me, is like, why? Like once again, I keep using this. It's not necessarily bad, but the game gets so far up its own ass because it literally pulls back in on itself. Yeah, right, So right. many <laughs> times. No, I and mean, that's why I think it's like a, a, a very... Uh, appropriate way to describe it because it in the most literal way it's it's it literally <laughs> it like, does that yeah and it just like i almost just i the only I, way i feel like they could have fixed it is just like I, I i hate to say have like a concrete ending because a game like this you almost like almost by law has to not <laughs> but and that's so and to me that's so frustrating like to me it's somebody getting away with saying something without saying anything. Yeah. Like, if they had it all of a sudden at the very end, like, I felt like if that last level, so when you very, at the very end, you beat it, uh, the last level that Coda made, you're playing something that Davey actually made in response, and then you play another one where there's no narrator. If that level had discovered to turn out to be by Coda, and like, this was Coda's response to the game, that would have been awesome. Because that would have been basically Coda saying, I hear you, this is what I had to say about it. So you're saying that didn't did that didn't happen? You're saying that's how, that's one way that like that's like that's if, a like, conversation. I'm right? just yeah. throwing yeah, because the whole time is this dude talking at you. Yeah. But the thing is, he's kind of talking to Coda, like Coda's talking out through his game. Yeah. Davy's talking to you through his voice and then right. eventually his one game. Yeah. And but what if like there had been a way to finalize like because right now as far as we know there's just this guy talking and then this guy talking and then i'm the judge yeah right uh and but there's no like (sighs) once again there shouldn't necessarily have to be a concrete finale in some games yeah some games it's better open to interpretation yeah that's fine this is a game that shouldn't have done that (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Like where, like when you're doing the ending where you float above and you see the maze, all I can think of is <sighs> why. Just yeah. like you're, you're this uh, at a certain point, the game became artsy for artistic sake. There was no, it didn't feel like there was necessarily a purpose. It was just them trying to be abstract and weird and yeah, like I, you know, I. Generally, re- I, I generally reject that assessment of art because you I hear it sometimes about things that I think do have something to say, mm-hmm. and and I often hear that what you just said said it in by somebody who clearly didn't understand it. In yep. this case, this it is the problem I had with. Despite what this game might literally do and what the Stanley parable did, I felt like these games were created to be clever. Mm-hmm. Like they, the, the point, like, you know, the, there's sure there's lessons and ideas and all this stuff, but I think the bottom line of the creation of all this stuff is look how clever I can be. I would a hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. It was a Jonathan blow effect <laughs> uh, of just like, <laughs> it was just uh, the creator just like, I could, I will, I, I, I think that's a fair criticism. I think Jonathan Blow's stuff is actually a lot, 
I, I, I like his stuff a lot. I, and, oh, and, I'm not saying that he's bad. Right. But it's just, it's that concept. It, but it could be argued, I think, reasonably that he does get his bit up his own ass also with, with a lot of this. Like, he, you know, it's just, yeah. I yeah, mean, like that's. If you know anything about games, you've probably heard of Jonathan Blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, well. I mean, that's not what we're talking about. So I guess we should just uh, yeah, leave it at that, probably. But, but yeah. th- it's the concept of the creator. Yeah. The th- the only reason I would say that that's not necessarily bad is there's games that like, say Cliffy B. Yeah. Uh, like when he made Gears of War, or he is, Cliffy B is the exact opposite of all of this. Yeah, and like, that's not to say that's a good or bad thing, but that's how I see. He him, yeah. just goes like the brute force <laughs> out there, and it's just but like, so the only like, while he's doing, oh, and I want to say shock factor, but like that nitty gritty, like that's what he's going for. Yeah. I mean, that's what the games are going for being clever, and I wouldn't say that's necessarily a point against them. The thing that I would agree with, maybe to, I don't want to say refine it a bit, but because they were trying to be so clever and they ended up not being special in their cleverness is what made it, well, unclever, I guess. It, like, the fact of matter being, this is a game that he himself has made before in a different way. Yeah. Um, and that other games have done before. So... Why do you think he made this game? I mean, what's a like like do you I think this game was was made for a very real reason by the yeah, designer. He had to have done it for something cuz I don't think he made this for a commercial success. <laughs> um, no, and, I don't think he made either of the games for that. I think it just kind of I happened. mean, certainly Parable started out as a mod for Half-Life. Yeah. Like he definitely didn't like Yeah. I mean, maybe he it turned out that he got lucky and was managed to make money off it, but I don't believe that either. Which is a very Coda esque situation, right? Very. <laughs> so that and that's it. That's that's what I think this game is about. Actually, I agree in that. So but I feel like all right. So let me let me pull this up so we can actually put real life names onto this. So the designers are Davy Redden, uh, Matthew Bright, and Richard Flanagan. So I want to say Davy is the narrator is the guy who's supposedly making this. And he says then himself that he is the creator. Whether or not he, that Davy is the saint, like he's projecting into that Davy, I don't know. I feel like this was a little bit of, the way I interpreted the whole thing is just, so the Stanley Parable was just like talking about players interacting with a game that's already made. Yeah. This I felt like was a way of a player interacting with games that have not been made. Uh, like, because, like, it came right around the time of Star Citizen. I mean, No Man's Sky still wasn't out yet. Like, all these games that were, like, huge before they were even out, yeah. that players are, like, sending death threats <laughs> to yeah. people about. Like, this was, like, right around that, like, I don't know, a year ago yeah. when this was happening. I felt like this was his take on that. I think... It certainly applies to that. Yes. Uh, but I think my feeling is that it was more specifically about people's reaction to hit to Stanley Parable. And I think he got a lot of people approaching him and, and sort of maybe a very aggressively messaging him. And, and like, I think this, this Davy character in, in the beginner's guide is just a sort of distilled version of a lot of people he that reacted to the Stanley Parable and decided it was what this one thing and that they assigned all these like meanings and values and mm-hmm. interpretations to it. The, none of that shit was there, and it doesn't even re, you know they 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 laid they claimed ownership to a vision that was not theirs. And I think so. I think you're right. I think I don't I don't think. Davey, I don't think the designer sat down and reacted to um, stuff like Star Citizen and and No Man, you know what what later we would see yeah. in No Man's Sky. However, I think it's a hundred percent the same thing. Now that you say that, I'm gonna. That, that's a good point. I, I like that, uh, especially since at a good time, Stanley Parable was that one game that kind of was not a game. It was like it was the arts game that could. Like, I mean, you've right. seen arts of games all over the goddamn yeah. place, but that was the one that got on the front of the Steam Usually they're homepage. unplayable, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, like what they, I will, I mean, I gotta, I gotta give these guys so much credit at the same time. I don't know. They did so much about this is good, but there really is. And I'm not saying I hate the game. Yeah. I'm saying it's not for me. Uh, yeah, saying it's not for me would yeah. be probably a good way because once again, there's, um, <clears throat> but the point, oh, hell, I had, uh, sorry, I, like, I, I keep interrupting you. Not like a counter argument, but just like I, I kept going from what you were saying. Shit. Of uh, what? The, like with um, him talking. Oh, about Oh, you were Stanley saying Parable. that. Uh, yeah, the Stanley Parable was like the art game that could, and it was on the Steam front page, and it was like this. You know, it was yeah. doing what no art games really. So ever it got to a do. huge audience of yeah. people that don't necessarily understand what art games are right. or have ever played one before. Yeah, especially in games, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so all of a sudden, they got a game that they're used to having a quote unquote ending, or at least pro- like solid progression yeah. into their own thing and then they, like i mean the game doesn't have like an ending it's a really is a choose your own adventure with that one yeah and i actually like Stanley parable i think it was a cool uh cool concept yeah uh but no that wasn't what i was gonna say there was something else i actually liked it hold on maybe i'll come back to it um, yeah yeah um right and i think i think the way you could uh sort of frame these games as the is the old like uh wu-tang uh i'm mm. pointing to the moon and you're looking at my finger yep i think i think that's really a, a, that's a, a beautiful a, metaphor for this yeah i think it's i think it's pretty um, pretty appropriate here and uh um you know at, that said like I, I get, uh, to some extent, I, I understand, I guess. I think I understand at least what he's saying, which is, like, these things don't need to be have a point necessarily, right? Mm-hmm. Um, however, I like I like a game to say something. I like my media to say a thing. Yeah, if, if even if it, like, is stupid Halo, Gears of War, like, there is, a, like, somewhere like in there. Bioshock, which yeah. we were talking about in the normal podcast, where, like, I thought the the what they presented, the ideas they presented, were extremely one sided, and uh, you know, very. They had it clear, that game had an agenda, but it. I think it's just way more interesting to make a case for something like that to to say something, even if I don't agree. I don't, and I'm not saying I again. I don't, I don't agree or disagree with Bioshock, but. It said something very deliberately, yeah. and that I find that rare. It was unshameful. It, it just yeah. it came out, yeah, said yeah. it, unapologetic. And like, yeah. That was like, and you know what? I I'd rather somebody just say their thoughts and not be like hesitant in it or like scared of themselves in it. I'd rather you just fucking say what you want to say, and that like that's the that that's making your voice heard. Yeah, but. The thing I was actually talking, uh, I finally remembered is, <laughs> so whew, now we're starting to get into the, f- now, here we go, philosophy. So th- there is the whole concept of I am an artist. Yes. I make art. Yes. I make this art thing and then I put it out into the world. Yeah. Is it at that point my thing? Or is right. it now yeah. the world's interpretation? Because I can fucking say artist intent all I goddamn want. Yeah. Joe Blow over there in the right seat's gonna go. This is what I think, yeah. and that is now his interpretation of yeah. it. That concept of like once it's out in the world, it's not technically yours anymore, uh, and that's something that a lot of developers struggle with. And I feel like Davey kind of struggles with a little bit too. Uh, I'm saying just Davy. I mean, it could have been the whole design staff, but I'm I'm just too broadly named Davy. Coda put out a game, and Davy put his own interpretation on it. Eventually, Coda got upset about it, but at the same time, too, he still put it out for interpretation, and the, he got upset that it wasn't either what he thought it was or the fact that he had an interpretation at all. Basically, made him upset, and he stopped making games. Because of it, because of the fact that, like, you're oh. wrong, I'm going to take my soccer ball and go home. Maybe. I think that's a very reasonable and maybe even the most likely conclusion, but I, I think also maybe he just 
wanted to do something else for a while. Yeah, that's entirely true. It's yeah. like we don't know ex- uh, except just, for what the narrator yeah, says. Exactly. Like, except for the narrator is just like, yeah, he just didn't make a game for a while. Right. I guess he's going to go kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Which is what the vibe right. I was getting. Right, um, he's kind of leaping to conclusions. So, yeah, I could 100% like, maybe he's just going to do Coda somewhere else. But even beyond, without him stopping to make games, the fact is like he he made a point to not put himself out there except to one person. And then when all of a sudden people started seeing his work, he started to, I don't want to say realize, or like he was afraid of people applying their own agendas and their own ideas onto his own thing. He wanted this. This was his. This was my idea behind it. This was mine. If it's in my possession and nowhere else's, it's still mine. Yeah. But the second it goes out into the public, it is now no longer mine. I got to admit that like I do sort of take ownership of experiences and and media and things I consume. Mm -hmm. I totally claim ideas and perspectives in them and champion them even. It's natural. Yeah, it it, it is. Like if you agree with something you see, you take that and make it evidence for your own ideas and arguments. And I think though, and I don't know that I certainly haven't experienced this. I don't know if you have. I've never made something, a piece of art or any work that got the exposure and consumption that this game, that the Stanley Parable mm-hmm. or this game did. So I, I, I understand that that's probably really hard and it probably feels kind of terrible, honestly. Yeah, it's a f- you lose control. But I think, uh, you know, if it, you just can't... It's easy for me to say where I'm standing, but I mean, I guess I believe it, so I'm just going to say it, which is like... Once you do put an idea, like that idea was never really yours in a way. It's a thing you came up with, but what it means, like you can't even know sometimes yeah. until people react to it. And it actually, it's <coughs> nothing until people react to it, right? I, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. Right there. The fact that like, yeah, you, it's not art until somebody, I don't want to say judges it, but observes it right. and then applies their thought process and logic on it right truly great art no matter what your background your thought process you can apply something to it and that's why i think abstract art isn't really a thing because people look at and go that's just a bunch of squiggly lines that doesn't mean shit but like if you put the mona lisa in front of somebody guess what they're gonna see like all the curves and lines and everything they're gonna see it and then be able to put their own thing on it yeah and they certainly will (coughs) yeah and so i think it's a little i don't know man it's you know, I, I'm trying to understand what this game is saying, but I feel like the game is shaming me for even trying. At I feel the like same the game time. shames itself. Yeah. So you know, I guess my my uh, my general conclusion on this one is like, in some ways, I love it. At the end of the day, it doesn't. I don't. It doesn't like do it, it. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I I think, you know. Just, I criticize the guys as wanting to just like parade their cleverness, and but the thing is, they are fucking clever. They, this game is extremely clever. That and the first <laughs> one where you have to walk backwards and yeah. you see everything that right. was fucking cool. Yeah, oh, like yeah. that was like some really cool ideas. Yeah, and 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 the way the themes again like fold back in on themselves, and you it creates this very layered and entangled paradox. But like, I'm just you know. I feel like culture got into this very meta phase and I'm and it's I'm just tired of meta yeah. uh and I'm tired of nothing, you know? Like I'm tired of not trying, I'm tired of you know, the things I'm enjoying most in my life right now are like the get down on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Because that that series it's kind of corny sometimes and I like you know they break into these songs and i'm just like i could do without this but the thing is is it's like it's very they just fucking go for it they're it's just it's got a it's got heart and they just they they don't try to like shelter themselves in a distance of like we're not really doing this thing you know like we're doing this ironically that that showed to me just actually it embraces what it is. It, it exactly, and it doesn't. It doesn't try to like use cleverness or irony or self-parody or anything like that to sort of protect itself. 
it is it is here. Like yeah. we're at the bar of where we are. We're not trying to like right. project ourselves up any higher. Or or yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that's what I that's the kind of stuff I'm liking right now. But you know, my preference for that is probably largely born out of the fact that I just we just had a whole bunch of meta shit for like ten years and whatever and it just at least Yeah, you're absolutely right in, in saying that. There was a I don't wanna say uh, I would say probably about two thousand six or two thousand seven. Right, actually, right around the first Bioshock, <laughs> <laughs> right about then, all of a sudden things started becoming. Everything had to have like a huge, deep message. Yeah. And then if it didn't, it kind of got shit on yeah. a little bit. Uh, was like where Call of Duty, exa- where like was the the eternal shit on, or where <laughs> like it was always out there because that's goddamn what it is. And yeah. yet, Call of Duty a joke, yeah. Yeah. But that's the point. Right. Like, they're not trying to hide. Like, they're just like, they you want right? to jump in the air and yeah. shoot a machine gun at robots in space? <laughs> yeah. We got the game for you. Yeah. And like, I'll still talk shit on that stuff, too, even though it's it's earnest and what it's doing. Oh, I don't yeah. Like that it's shit retarded. All the time either. Yeah. But you know what? They embrace what they are. They're yeah. like, they're not trying to, like, put themselves up to a certain height yeah. or anything. That's why I like Battlefield 1 right now, which I was actually going to talk about <laughs> on the next podcast. Like, it is a dark and gritty look at World War One, yeah. which is something that, as a species, we try to forget. <laughs> yeah. But you, they're not trying to, like, it's not grandiose. People die. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's real. Like, mm-hmm. this is the way it is. And that's it. There's no, like, huge meaning behind freedom and independence. Like, no, it's just, like, this is war. Deal with it. And that's it. Yeah. And I think we're actually kind of, I mean... Society is always just rubber banding, right? We're always just going one way and then the other. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. That's this, like, it's just humans eternally. We're unsatisfied with our presence. Right? Exactly. So. so I feel like right now we're starting to kind of, like, I guess we'd say Battlefield 1's kind of the uh, showing of, like, a mainstream game is going in the complete opposite direction. Yeah. And embracing the fact that it is that opposite direction. And people, you can look at any reviews going, oh, it's great it's really cool it's awesome but then you could be like i look back at like you know 10 15 years and the original call of duty was that yeah you know right. brothers in arms was that yeah like and that's what they started out as <laughs> yeah, and then they the, started getting weird yeah. and then now all of a sudden we're back and like it's refreshing take yeah. on uh, games and like <laughs> no shut up it's right. the same shit yeah you're uh, right it's exactly it, it is like that's the thing like that's something really important to keep in mind with like any criticism. And I guess a a thing I'm trying to like just remind myself lately is that we're what we are in the way we see the world is not solid. It's fluid. It's Mm -hmm. forever evolving. So how we are right now is not, it's not a, there's no right answer. There's no conclusion. I I mean, it's chaos theory. And and I'm going back into, I guess, the beginner's guide's whole point, maybe. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that my tastes and my opinion right now are firmly planted in what has just happened and what's been happening in the past time behind me. And so I don't mean to put a flag on the ground and say, this thing sucks, this thing's great. For me in my life right now, with my taste and what I'm seeing in the world... I like what you said where I guess like these earnest sort of trying things. Uh, But at the same time, the fact that I like that is the same old shit Mm -hmm. of I only like that because it's not what I already know. And now at some point I'll probably get tired of what I like now and think it should be another thing. Absolutely. No, if you had presented this game to me in about 2009, 2010 version (laughs) of me, it would have been the fucking best shit ever. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, No, like, I mean, it's just, it's a product of its time. Unfortunately, I would say it's probably coming out a little too late. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, and I think that's it. And Um, yeah, it's just, it's just not, it's not, and it's interesting technically to me, I guess, as a developer, but as a, like, just more objective consumer of art or experience, game experiences, it's just, like, it's been done. Yeah. It's been done. It's been done a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it's been done better. Well, the thing that my final, I guess, takeaway would be is, like, holy crap, how long did it take for them to come up with those individual mechanics? Uh, what, uh, like, like just like walking backwards. There's the jail ones yeah. where there's just a, like I'll give them credit where credit is due. There is a lot of shit. 
Yeah, which is cool, and you can do in these like, and I think that's a strength of the the format mm -hmm. because they have these very contained uh, maps. You can try a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and move on, and um, it doesn't get tired. It's as, just like it's done. As as he even says at the end of the the backwards walking level, like it works because it gets out quick, and I feel like the game as a whole. That's true of the game as a whole, and it's true of each of the maps. That's all. Well. Yeah, no. The f if that game had been longer, I would have lost my shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. all right. I guess on that note, we finished up on. Do we have any final say on it? Uh, I think we. I think we got it. I we think we I, tore into it. Yeah, that was good really there. good. Um, I think I got everything off my chest, and I think we found some new stuff. I feel too. better about. I feel better. Oh. Good. Me all too. right. So I have just pulled up a random number generator. All right. Through one through thirty-three. Now. Okay. For those of you who don't know, we have an Excel document of all the games mm -hmm. that we are thinking about playing for this. So my idea is I'm going to roll this number generator. We're going to see what the hell it pops out, and we're going to see the game that it correlates to. All right. I'm excited. The number is 10. Okay. And the game is Layers of Fear. Oh. Wait, can we roll it again? You want to? just talked about that. We did just talk podcast. about it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you oh, were there. We did a little you were, bit. You talked about it. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk about that much, I guess. Shit. Hmm. We could put a little bit more time into it. Uh, in between, I guess. Uh, no, let's do it. All right. Layers, Layers of, of fear. fear. All right. Layers of fear it is. Okay, so for those of you at home, if you feel the absurd need to come <laughs> along with us, go play Layers of Fear before we do this. Yeah, I think these talks in general, I think at least for a while, will benefit if you've already played the game. Yeah. Like, ideally, we'd unravel this thing, these things in a in a sort of step through the ideas almost like as we experience them but that's really fucking hard to do yeah <laughs> like so. no this is definitely we're this is the way i kind of see this as therapy sessions in a sense of we're all just sitting down in our little aa meetings talking about what the fuck we just saw and experienced <laughs> yeah uh especially with I, i've already played and beaten layers of fear and the dlc yeah i didn't even know there was dlc it, it's like two three hours it's not very long okay. but uh, we, we won't say you have to play the dlc yeah. but the main game itself there's alternate endings there's i think there's at least three of them yeah and funnily enough it's all about art yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, see that's like kind of my hesitation on it i feel like we can we, re, we can re-roll i'm okay we can put a little bit more time all right, how about this it. We'll do. We'll allow one reroll right now. Okay. And if it's better, we'll go with it. Otherwise, later. Okay. So I, I would say let's let's set the precedence now. <laughs> if the <laughs> okay. general group is be. not appreciative of the next roll, we can reroll once. Once. And that is it. But do we have to stick with the reroll? Yeah. I yeah, I'd say if you're sick, if you're going to do consequences to this reroll, I think you should have to risk something, right? Yeah. yeah. And layers of fear is still on the table for later. Sure. Okay. All okay. right. We, everybody agree. The audience says yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, we are re-rolling to 15. 15 is... Stanley Parable. Super hot. Cool. All right. Great. Yeah. Very I different. One. All right. That's perfect. Yeah. That's great, actually, because uh, they're doing a VR thing. I'm trying oh, a lot no of VR shit. stuff right now. That would yeah, be a so perfect game for it, VR. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, cool. All Super right. Super hot. So the next game is... Super hot. That's what Super they do in the game. Hot. Super hot. Oh. Right? Yeah, That's God, I played that game when the first day it came out. That was a good game. All right, right. <laughs> goodbye. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Oh, I got deep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the point, though, right? Yeah, That's yeah, it is. is.